all the words up in my song. You all my rock, you all my earth. You do some more, that's what you want. You want. Welcome to TSB Universe. Uh, this is a segment called Truly Special Beings. We do have a truly special being in the building today. Very creative. Uh, yeah, awesome at what he does. Today we also have a special guest host, uh, special host, uh, Brittany Hammond. And she's going to be interviewing uh, John John Villanueva, director, yeah. writer, creator of Concrete Rose. How you doing today, Brittany? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm awesome. awesome. John? I'm doing? great. I'm safe <laughs> and sound. Quarantine like a mother. Yeah. <laughs> right? It mm -hmm. looks like we all are. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, uh, go ahead, Brittany. Okay. Um, so go ahead, me. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, let's just let's start by talking about who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. um, basically, your experience in film and go from there. Yeah, my name is John John Villanueva. I'm a South Bend native, artist, director, writer, songwriter, poet, and more in post, uh, most uh, importantly, I'm a, a father. That's number one, period, no matter what. Um, creative kid growing up, always you know, wrote poetry and stuff like that, music when I was 12 years old. I grew up a lot differently than most people. Um, conventionally, uh, my parents were hippies, so they pretty much, you know what I'm saying, uh, had like more of a party lifestyle and uh, very uh, influential with my upbringing with music and stuff like that. Being a young age, my father used to put me in front of people and stuff with microphones when I was five, six years old, singing the Temptations, old Elvis songs and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Al Green. So the musical background came from my father and my family that basically pushed me forward to uh, be creative at a very, very young age. Yeah. And you have a new film coming out, Concrete Rose. Can you yes, tell us a little about that? It's fucking amazing. I don't know if I can cuss on here, but I cuss. I'm just letting y'all know right now. My child ain't here, so it's going down. Well, basically, it's the first ever all Latino film casted in South Bend, Indiana history. It's literally never been done, uh, which I'm extremely proud of to be a part of that. Um, we have actors from ranging from different uh, people from around the area. Angel Garcia, which plays the mother in the film. My brother Damian Villanueva, that plays the villain in the film. Eli Cantu, that plays the bodyguard. My uncle Roy Villanueva, my cousin Jojo Villanueva. And the very talented and beautiful uh, Celine Morales, that plays the love interest in the film as well. We got Raheem Taylor, Big Mex, that's in the actual uh, movie as well. Uh, Manuel Rodriguez, Oriana, uh, and uh, also uh, Ian King Navente, that plays in the film as well. Um, the locations on this film was shot strictly in uh, South Bend um, for most of the scenes, uh, but we have some visual scenes from San Francisco as well that we did uh, a jet scene as well as uh, New York as well. So it's a wide range of people and uh, environment. It's a love story about a daughter of a powerful man that falls in love with uh, a mariachi player or a guitar player. And uh, he basically for forbids them to be together for the simple fact that uh, he feels like she deserves more because they come from a higher class or higher standard. And they go through trials and tribulations to try to be together with each other while their father is completely forbidden it in a way that most actual fathers that's not in a higher position probably normally would. Like he's more drastic, like he's with the shits, you know what I'm saying? Like he don't play no games, you know, he's a very powerful man and he's basically uh, don't want his daughter to be with this this uh, person. And uh, they go through a lot, a lot of stuff to try to be together. And uh, it's based on a true story that my father told me when uh, he was in Vietnam. He uh, fell in love with a Vietnamese woman in Vietnam. Her name was Lu Quai. And um, basically, he tried to be with her at the time where there's a lot of racism going on in the world. Him being Hispanic and her being Vietnamese, they didn't want that mixture going down. And he had to go through trials and tribulations, sneak out with the girl and stuff like that. So it's based on a true story that my father told me as well as inspired by my own true story that I went through in my life as well. Wow, got it. That's yeah. that's pretty that's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I'm bringing the I'm bringing the heat. No, that's very real. Yeah. Um. So I'm assuming you wrote the script as well, then as well as directing. Of course. Yeah, I, I, I casted the film. I produced the film. I edited the film. Um, directed the film. Obviously, I work. I also worked uh, the camera work on it as well, and some different uh, issues. 
I brought along a good friend of mine, Visual Giants, uh, that came along to help with some uh, camera work uh, as well. Um, we had Rome Vell work on one certain scene as well. Uh, Brittany uh, Momo, she's been helping me out with, throughout the process. Just anything that I need done with the situation, she's been a part of the help as well. Um, sure. I've literally done it all, the wardrobe, everything. It's, it's very tasteful, very classy. It almost sets in a different time period where you know, women wear dresses and, and it's very classy. We got 1970 Cadillacs in this bitch. I got about eight of them. My homeboy, nice. Eric Lee, basically <laughs> hooked it up. He's a South Bend uh, Cadillac club, uh, car club that they run in South Bend. So I got about eight classic vehicles in this thing. We got a full length mansion. We use the Oliver Mansion. I rented out the whole place. It's If you've ever been in the Oliver Mansion, it's mm -hmm. artistic, it's antique. It is fucking beautiful. Beautiful. That sounds really cool. Yeah, no, definitely. So the locations we had, we had a farmhouse outside pool, about 20 acres of land. We also had another farm that we shot in as well. So it's very like rustic and uh, very tasteful. And the locations gives it, you know, the the actors and the people of Rose to be a part of the situation because the location, it, it brings you into that mode. So it like messes yeah. with the, with the um, theme. Yeah. The name of the movie. Yeah, no, definitely. He, he's uh, he's uh, talented as well. Damien, right? Was yes, uh, part of the cast or was it like you already knew that? The people that I set up to be a part of this production, I already knew they would win because I knew their background and I know these people personally. Therefore, I knew they could play the role to perfection because they're actually these right. type of people. Eli is a he's a um, intimidating type of factor. If you ever met him, he's a very very nice man. Don't get me wrong, but he looks intimidating as shit. You know what I'm saying? My uncle Roy is a straight boss. He's been a boss since he was born. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he just plays that natural role. So. Angel being a mother, a strong woman, a big heart. I know she would naturally just kill the role as being the mother. Celine Morales, very 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 classy, very very pure, innocent look. Um, she's a very, very sweet, respectful woman. So I knew it that she would play the love interest completely, you know what I'm saying, without a doubt. My brother is intimidating as shit. He's got about 2,000 tattoos all over his body. His face is completely covered in tattoos, but he's a great guy, love him to death. Um, so I knew he'd be able to play these roles. So I set people up to win because obviously uh, doing so, I know that the production and the actual film will come out, you know, perfectly as expected. So it sounds like you worked with a lot of people that are that are close to you as opposed to hiring an outside actor. Definitely. Was there a reason for that? I'm assuming there's a reason that you went with that choice. Not necessarily. Um, I mean. Or is that just kind of how it worked out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just knew that these people would win. They have a great look. They're all beautiful people. They have a great look. See, that's the thing that people need to realize when they do something like that as far as film and other stuff like that. Casting is the most important thing. Not so much. Uh, I mean, obviously, you got to be able to play the role and, and, and fit the emotion for the part, but also the look of these people. Like, it's got to be, um, I don't know, it's got to be convincing, you yeah, know? It's look like the, right. the person Exa in the Exactly. The look has got to fit. If the look don't fit, it, it won't work. Like it just, it'll be stagnant. It'll be like, why is this person even in here? When I see certain things like that, that's what I look at. I look at, does their look fit that role? Not so much um, how well they act out the role, but is their look fit in that role? Because you're going to be seeing these people, not just hearing them, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing the film in your head, you can see that person actually exactly. in that spot. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then the the wardrobe as well. Like we wanted to give them a classic style look, you know, where these people can flourish and, and feel the role as well as uh, play it out, you know. So, yeah, a lot of aspects of playing the, in the mode of doing this. Plus, it's time consuming as shit, you know, like it's, it's, definitely. it's definitely time consuming. So, yeah, I'm very proud to be a part of something so great. And, uh, you know, the support has been unreal from the city as well as uh, outside sources, celebrities, actors, athletes, you know what I'm saying, that congratulated me on this task. And uh, it's very humbling. Yeah, I and, seen, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just saying I've seen uh, a lot of those uh, celebrities, well-known people, you know, saying great job and, you know, keep it up. Yeah, it's been unreal. Like, Lala Anthony from Power, Victor Ortiz, WBC former champion, welterweight, you know what I'm saying? 
Emilio Rivera from the Mayans MC and Sons of Anarchy. Um, Neo, I mean, Amanda Perez, uh, Celise Rose. I know you know who Celise Rose is. You got to know who Celise Rose is. Like, she's a Instagram uh, artist, influencer. Like, she's a phenomenal person. Diana uh, Oroz, uh, she's a Telemundo actress that hooked up. And I just recently landed uh, Frankie J, bless me, you know what I'm saying, and the cast and the crew, you know what I'm saying, for putting on, as well as uh, Sean Patrick Thomas from... Uh, Save the Last last Dance and the Barbershop, which he did a very heartfelt, great message for the situation as well. And the thing that that's that's kind of crazy to me, I'm from South Bend, Indiana. I'm from the same places as everybody else around the city, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't see too much of this around here. So I know that, uh, you know, the, the specialness of it is uh, definitely uh, getting out to the rest of the uh, people around the world as well as the industry as well. Plus, we got Lisa Martinez, which is the narrator of the project. She's the niece of Danny Treo. Like, she's a part of the actual film, so, wow. which I'm very blessed to have her be a part of this as well. Like, she's a good friend, such a beautiful soul, and uh, yeah, she's just been a, just a driving force, you know what I'm saying, to, to make something even more beautiful, considering I have her a part of the project as well. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, I appreciate it. So, how do you how do you feel that this film and as much attention as it's getting, and mm -hmm. the fact that it's such a historical film with it being an all Latino cast? How do you feel mm -hmm. like that's going to impact the community in South Bend, especially being all South Bend natives involved? I think that uh, people it'll give them a sense of pride, but I think it'll give all people a sense of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, you know me being from the same city as them, they feel like okay, if I did something like this, what can they do? Like, I want to see it be topped. Like, I, I, I look at a lot of, we talked about this before, uh, th there's a tons and tons of talented people in South Bend. But at times, I'm not seeing too much creativity mm -hmm. with video and production around the way. It's kind of stagnant. Like, even with music videos, I don't want to see you by your garage, man. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you're in the alley, you know what I'm saying? And there are people walking by, you don't know. Like, I don't want to see, back in 09, I shot, a video called Complicated um, with Jason Miller, which was signed to Convict Music. That's Akon's uh, record uh, label. He was signed to Convict. I, did, I was the first South Bend artist to ever have a major artist do a video in South Bend. It's on Fox News. You can look all this shit up. It's documented. I had a $1.5 million jet in that bitch. That's back in 09. I want to see this shit be top. <laughs> I want to see people go further and push the culture even forward through South Bend. So I'm hoping that this project can inspire other people to do something great with themselves as well as give pride to the community as, as far as the Latino community to know that we can do anything possible. It doesn't matter. The technology that today does not limit us to do anything that we possibly want to do. We got jets. I got horses. I got mansions. I got 1960s cars. I got gunshot scenes. Like, this shit is crazy. Like, right. I got car chase scenes and shit. Like, it's a action-packed drama romance type of film you get every aspect that you could possibly want and it's based on a true story and um yeah i think people are going to be very surprised and be very uh fucking wild by this project and how it was so well put together absolutely no thank and you i've seen it described as music driven what yes. what exactly does that mean because it sounds like there's a narrator um, is there is yes. it like a musical? Are there musical parts? No, there's not. There's 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 tons of dialogue in it. Um, but we put certain scenes in there. I mean, obviously you got a breakdown in films and stuff like that where there's music going through it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to incorporate music as much as I possibly could into the project because I wanted it to give it that feel. Obviously, you guys, people being from the culture and stuff like that, you can realize that music is emotion. You can put on a, a certain song and it can get you in a certain place. That's what I wanted to do with this film. Me coming from a musical background, I wanted to put that into the film. So not only can you feel the actual uh, situation through the music, but you can also feel it from the visuals as well as the dialogue as well. So there's a lot of musical driven situations in this situ in the actual film that uh, push you in that place that I feel like you need to be for the certain scene. Did you have one artist that did a lot of the music for it or did you do a lot of the music for it? Yeah, I did. I did all the music for. I, oh, I definitely wow. casted all the film for it too. But I also reached out to other people around the uh, the world. Uh, we have uh, Levy, which uh, did a beautiful song. Dime. Uh, she's a, a Las Vegas artist. She's toured in Panama, Panama, all over the place. Like she's 
literally a renowned superstar in my eyes. Like this girl is crazy. And then I also got Sarah Phillips that uh, uh, out of L.A. that blessed me with some song, uh, uh, some songs as well that definitely came through in the clutch because these people are phenomenal. Now, I did reach out to South Bend artists mm-hmm. and ask them, hey, can you be a part? <laughs> I, I reached out to a couple people, but I don't think that it's weird. It's like us being from a certain spot in South Bend. And when you hear about somebody doing something in South Bend, and you don't really think too much of it. It's weird. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know what I'm saying, man. Like, people be like, ah, okay. So when I ask people to be a part of the situation as far as the musical situation as well as some small little uh, extra type of cameo type roles, um, mm-hmm. I was reluctant to get a couple of people that I wish I would have um, that I felt like it would have helped them just South Bend as a whole. And now when they see the situation, a couple reach back and be like, man, I fucked up. And I'm like, nah, nah, you're good, man. i get you on the next one. But, you know, like us being from a small city, they don't really think that something of uh, that happens in South Bend can reach a certain magnitude in the plateau. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm literally defying odds right now as we speak with this project in uh, South Bend. You know what I'm saying? It's for the it's for the city. Definitely. Do you feel like that was the only real uh, road roadblock that you ran into as far as shooting in South Bend, getting extras and stuff? Um, no. Was it easy to find locations? I know you said you shot with Oliver Mansion, but were there a lot of small businesses that kind of helped you guys along, helped helped the production along? Well, we had Little Flower Catholic Church. I think the the most biggest blockage as far as location wise would be churches. You mm, know what I'm saying? Because okay. they're not so reluctant to actually, you know do certain things, you know, mm-hmm. that we, we put into the actual film in their, you know, congregation establishment. So that being said, that was the toughest little thing. It took me about a week, but everything else, everybody else was literally just on board. Like I, I didn't have no problems with that at all. Everybody was really reluctant to, especially when the press started going on, mm-hmm. it's been on C yes. news. It's been on WS, you know, uh, BT, I mean, it's been countless podcasts, Notre Dame radio, like it's been all over the place. So once they seen and heard the situation, what's going on, they were reluctant to be a part of it. Now, the funny thing about that is the news was kind of like, OK, you're doing a movie. OK, I got this. I got that. <laughs> once the celebrities jumped on, they was all over me. They was mm-hmm. like, OK, let's let's get on it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean. I never really had any blockage with anything like that. The casting went great. The locations went great. It's just very time consuming, you know. I, I was doing this since last fall, you know. So, and the movie uh, is pretty much done now, right? It's completely done. And it's it was com- supposed to air or supposed to premiere in March. March fourteenth. Yeah, two days before, I kept calling them, and I was like, "Yo," I was like, "Are we good?" They're like, "Yeah, we're good. We got hand sanitizer, all this." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> And then I uh, kept calling, we good? And they were like, yeah. And the the one lady, uh, I can't really remember. I think her name might have been Michelle. I'm not sure. She's such a nice lady. She she was excited. She was like, we've never seen ticket sales like this. Like, this is kind of unreal, you know, for, for, for this place. Because, I mean, you're, you're doing stuff. I'm sending out. They were like, we're sending out tickets left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. So right. I was excited about it, but I was definitely relieved. Because obviously I didn't want to put something on and then somebody, you know, get uh, sick or upset over something that, that uh, you know, a production that I put on in the Civic Theater. So mm-hmm. Aaron Nichols was definitely great on that. Um, I appreciate him, him definitely. It's postponed for when the stuff closes down. And then as soon as uh, everything gets back up and running, we're going to push forward and do what we do. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's understandable. You know, I mean, everything is postpone right now everything yeah everything mm-hmm. you're watching so, reruns of the super bowl from like, i know, <laughs> you know I mean? I'm watching old basketball clips i know man it's crazy yeah. but i'm happy that it worked out the way it did you know it's god's plan um i think it'll just make it bigger and better you know what i'm saying That's it's mm-hmm. just, oh, it's great. yeah i had a couple performers coming in that was going to perform before the actual premiering uh i was actually do, uh, still going to do a tribute to south bend uh, for people in South Bend that lost their lives too early and too soon, loved ones from people around the city, that um, I wanted to do a special song from uh, uh, Cheyenne Order was going to sing a, a very beautiful song for these people in South Bend. So on the historic night of uh, the first ever all Latino film in South Bend, Indiana history, I'm also going to give back to the city by remembering the people in the city that uh, passed on and lost their lives too soon. So it's definitely... Uh, 
a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're. It sounds like you're doing another another premiere. Um, but are you going for streaming services as well, or do you have any plans after the premiere as far as that? Yes, um, we're doing. I actually, uh, I got a link in to a couple people and some streaming services. Possible Netflix. Obviously, I need a curator for more of that. Amazon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we're definitely going to push, but obviously, I want to do the premiere first. Right. And not only do I want to do the premiere in South Bend, but I'm also going to take it on the road a little bit once things get back to normal. There was talks on having one in Houston and Dallas and stuff like that as well. So I'm definitely going to take it out on the road, kind of like a promotional situation before the streaming thing is set up so people can go ahead and uh, watch it online as well. Are you thinking film festivals too then, like Riverbend? Definitely, definitely. Okay, definitely. nice, there's nice. A, there's, there's like uh, three of them. Obviously, that we're going to be a part of Southwest by Southwest. Obviously, was closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple of them in Houston that I'm looking to be a part of in Miami, the Manny's as well. Uh, there's a couple things that I'm looking to get a part of as far as film festivals because uh, I feel like the project is worthy enough for it. I'm a perfectionist. Therefore, if I felt like on some real, real shit, like no bullshit aside, if I felt like this project wasn't worthy enough for people to see it the correct manner, and through festivals, I wouldn't do it. I told myself through this project, as I began shooting and shooting and shooting and getting things done, I told myself, if this is not going in my mind, in my heart, I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to waste my time doing something I feel is not worthy enough to do it. Mm -hmm. But as I began shooting, it got more exciting. It's like fucking wow, you know? Like The emotion in this film is definitely, everybody can take something from this film emotionally, whether it's from... Uh, a family aspect, uh, a father, a strict father, or something like that, a caring mother, because we all have them situations, you know. Uh, somebody that you love, love actually plays a part in, into it as well, the drama of it and stuff like that. So it's worthy enough to go to film festivals and it's worthy enough to be shown the correct manner. And that's why I'm being so patient with it, definitely during these times. What's the main message that you want people to take from it? I know that there's multiple messages that they can take, oh, but. Yeah. What's what are you really trying to to say with such an emotional film like this? Without giving it away? Yeah, um, right. Because obviously, there's <laughs> the, yeah, obviously, oh. it, yeah, I can't I can't do that. It's very inspiring. It's very very heartfelt. Like it's something that somebody will be able to feel, male or fem- female, can take away from it. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns in this film. Like something that you might not think would happen would happen. Something that, uh, in my eyes, because you know I'm a definitely avid uh, movie watcher, we haven't really seen too much of these type of type of films. Like it's, you got to pay attention. If you miss something, there's tons of messages in there that that you can get from it. But I would say heartfelt and inspiring, very inspiring and very heartfelt. Yeah. Which it sounds like inspiration is kind of what South Bend could use for the arts community. So especially after this, after being yeah. stuck in our houses for so long. I definitely, <laughs> definitely agree. I think people will be extremely surprised when they see the project. It's beautiful. Like people use that word often, you know, like, oh, that's beautiful. But it's like extremely, it's just beautiful. It's really beautiful and well put together. The characters, the wardrobe, the location, the dialogue, the emotion, it's just really beautiful. And I think people will, will be uh, very impressed by it. Now, when, uh, you, you have a particular inspiration that caused you to kind of write this, at least from what the news said. And, you know, yeah. maybe like, you know, like that tragic part that you were saying you were going to display on for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, my... Uh, I seen my brother shot in 2002. I seen him shot and killed. His name was Anthony Jacob Villanueva. He died on April 4th, 2002, which just passed recently. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a very uh, inspirational person in my life, me, him being my older brother. Um, everybody has somebody they can go to and talk to and stuff like that, and they kind of calm you down and get you back to earth, you know, so to say. He was that person for me. I could call on him and talk to him, and he calmed me down during the situation. And uh, he was definitely uh, a very inspirational person that was a part of my life. I also lost a special person in my life that uh, I love truly to this day. Her name was Veronica Perez. 
she was shot and killed uh, a couple years back um and uh she was a uh, man she was an angel like she uh made me always feel uh special she always made me feel beautiful no matter what i love her family to death angel garcia who plays the mother in the film is actually her cousin um, oh. she was a very special person to me and a very special person to others as well um such a beautiful soul uh her daughter was actually going to come to the premiere as well uh, me dedicating the film toward uh, Veronica Perez. Uh, her daughter uh, wanted to come, so I got her a ticket and shit so she can come. But she was an amazing person, man. Like, still to this day, you know, like, I think of her at times and stuff like that. I still have the rose from her funeral on my mantle. Um, she was just a, definitely a driving force for me to do something uh, with this film and dedicate it to her as well. Is, is that where the name of the film comes from, Concrete Rose? No, Concrete Rose, it's actually a, like a, my own personal uh, description of uh, somebody that comes from nothing. Somebody comes from the bottom, straight from the mud. Nothing at all. You know, That's I, I, I wasn't, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't raised in the best situations in my life. I could go on for days. Like, I was raised differently than most other people. And for me, coming from the place that I, I came from and uh, things that I experienced and went through in my life, I should literally be dead in jail. I shouldn't be owning my own business right now. I shouldn't be doing a feature film right now. I shouldn't be a wonderful father to my daughter right now. I shouldn't be all these things. But I am. I defied the odds. So no matter what goes on in my life and anything that happens in, in my situation, I'm always winning re regardless. So I know that, and that's what keeps me going through any hard time that happens in my life. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we push forward. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. But it's from Concrete Roses coming from nothing and be becoming something beautiful. And that's what I hope people get from the message that happens with this film. It's basically coming from nothing and making something beautiful out of yourself, regardless of age, gender, sexuality, uh, race, no matter what. We can all be something beautiful no matter what. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, your background, uh, all the cards that was against you in life, because trust me, I've had many. You know, I'm uh, seeing my brother killed is definitely uh, would be a definite excuse for me to fuck up my life and be a junkie or, or a fucking criminal or a fucking piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? But it pushed me for further to do something special with my life. I've been on tour with Convict. I've done a lot of things and musically. I had songs submitted to the Grammys before with J.D. Greer out of California. Like, this is realistic. And I've done these things because that bad fuel that you get from life that sometimes it gives you, you can use it to push you to something beautiful and something great in life. And that's what I've done my whole path. And that's what I'll continue to do. And that's the message that I want to give to others as well. That's, awesome. that's amazing. Um, so the, the people that you lost, are they represented in the film at all? Are they, are they characters in the film without giving too much away? Because I know that could, yeah. that could probably give a little away. No, they're not. Um, but characters. How, did, how did that build the men? Yeah, they're not actually characters in the film, but they inspired the film tremendously. Obviously, through the story my father told me about him and being in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, Veronica's situation is a little touch and go. I mean, I wanted to honor her for this film. Obviously, mm -hmm. this film is not about her, but it's dedicated to her. Because um, I'm going to tell you what, if there was anybody in my eyes that was a a definition of a concrete rose, it would have, have been her, because she was beautiful. Like, she was just a beautiful, beautiful soul. Her smile would light up the world. Like, she was such a great person, and I love her dearly, and I still love her to this day. And, um, yeah, it just inspired, they inspired this film, and they inspired me, you know, like, to do something like this, for it being so heartfelt. I feel like when you go through certain things in life, and, uh, you know, from a tragic situation, like I said, you could use it to two different manners. You can go left or you can go right. You can use it for good or you can use it for bad. I put all these emotions and all these things that happened to me in my life and things that I've been through in life and I just literally splued it all over a film. And uh, the emotion that comes out of it is just amazing. So it's, it's, it's extremely realistic. It's weird to say, but it's extremely realistic. And people will be able to adapt to it a lot. Yeah. Okay. So the the leading lady uh, would kind of share qualities that Veronica had. No, no, no. Veronica was cool as shit. I mean, Celine's amazing. 
Celine is like a, she's just a very well respected, classy, elegant type woman. She comes from a good, yeah, she comes from a good family. I mean, she's just a good person. She's just, she has an amazingly good heart. And uh, go ahead, I'm listening. The person, the role in the movie. Yeah. That, you know, that rose, that, uh, the leading lady role that, Mm -hmm. that you wrote out. That would come from Veronica. It would share. No, no, no. This is a, this is a story that uh, I put together to be a part of it. Um, as far as the the storyline, Veronica has nothing to do with the storyline, so to say. Uh, but she uh, definitely inspired certain situations and inspired me to do something great with myself with this film. It's dedicated to her. I wanted to honor her. By doing this film, but as far as storyline, no, Veronica has nothing to do with uh, the role as far as what Celine Morales plays. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want people to know about the film? It's coming anything soon. Anything we didn't talk about? <laughs> nah, it's coming soon. I mean, the the buzz is is still there. People are excited to see it. Uh, people that have followed me through my music career know usually when I do something, I do it like to the best of my ability. Um, so they know that uh, people that know me and follow me through uh, types of music that I've done, they know I don't fuck around. You know what I'm saying? Like they know I'm with the shit. Like I am with the shit. Like I'm not doing nothing mediocre. I'm not doing nothing like extremely like uh, that it looks like shit. You know, just because it's from a small place don't mean it don't. This is literally a major, literally a major like production just in an independent standpoint. And it's in a small city. You know, like the news people were all over me. Like the WNDU was going to do a feature on the situation as well. Notre Dame Observer. Like, so when these things start to get back to normal in the city, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, get a hold of the news and have them publicize it a little bit more on what's going on. But it's a major production just from an independent standpoint. It's got a beautiful story to it. And I think people are going to be fucking blown away when they see this because they, I think they'll be impressed by the fact that us being from a small town and me being from the same town as them, they'll be like, damn, I can't believe this dude did this in this city. Like, this is crazy. So I'm excited for people to see it. I wish uh, there's only been a handful of people that have seen it now and everybody is literally just speechless and blown away. Um, I did it to perfection. It's almost like writing a song. Like, um, I literally know what's in my head, I can write down on paper and I can express that without a doubt, like 100%. I did the same thing through video. So, you know, what what my mind and heart put into this film is exactly what you see through this process as far as production. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Nah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I what's, definitely appreciate it. What's next for you? After, after premiering, after coronavirus, after all this, yeah. what, what's your next... Uh, next project it's so weird the streaming obviously i mean it's just because the premiere goes on doesn't mean the situation is done with concrete rose we're gonna, mm-hmm. i'm going to continue to promote it uh film festivals and stuff like that and take it on the road to do other premieres as well um and then obviously the streaming situation as well and then continuous of promotion through the situation as far as in promoting the streaming aspect there's been on talks on uh on me doing another one um i'm looking to do possibly like a romantic comedy in a way i'm thinking about doing something like that as well i got a i got a great concept that people really feel i don't want to give it away but uh Mm -hmm. there's definitely be uh special things in the future that i'm going to do as well but uh when i put my all into something i feel like this is just my personal opinion i feel like if anybody puts truly puts their all into something it's tunnel vision there's no this and that I'm not the type of person that can just multitask and shit. Like, I can't do that. I'm either doing this or I'm doing that. Like, there's no in-between. And I feel like to give a process of putting your all into a a production uh, feature film, I feel like you have to be that way because it's so time-consuming and it's Mm -hmm. so... Like, any little mistake can make it look not well. And I'm not with the not well. I've been... (laughs) I've spent eight, ten-hour days editing, literally. Like, nonstop. Like mm-hmm. it's been on, you know what I'm talking. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> exactly. Like, and I've been doing this for months. So it's literally just, it's a continuous process and I'm still tweaking little tiny little things as we, 
as we speak because obviously mm-hmm. since the, the the virus hit and the premiere ain't going, uh, I'm trying to perfect my perfection in a way. Now you can sit home and stare at it. And exactly. Every little thing, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And just every little thing, the color correction, the editing process, the transitions, the music, the, uh, you know, the mix of the music. I mean, everything possible. So it's a process. And uh, yeah, I'm just straight tunnel vision with everything right now. So it's all concrete rows no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Def- all right. I yeah. think that, uh, that covers pretty much everything I wanted to ask unless Martin had something else. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, can't wait to see the film. Uh, I appreciate uh, it. We will do something special for the fans here uh, once, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, man. Let's open back up, you know. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got the new trailer that's dropping soon. I got an extended trailer that I'm dropping soon. Where we can drop, you look for that? Uh, you can look. it would be on Facebook as well, um, as well as other platforms. But Facebook will be the main source. You can look me up at John John Villanueva. Um, some people call me Gotti, some people call me John John, whichever you prefer. And you can see all the interviews that we had with the news teams. I got casting interviews that I did with Angel Garcia, Salim Morales, Damian Villanueva, Eli Cantu, as well as my own interview. You can see all the countless celebrity videos that came out through the event page as well. I mean, it's been that shit is crazy. I ain't even gonna lie to you. It's extremely humbling. Um, but yeah, I mean. You can check out all the information on Concrete Rose and everything that uh, has been set forth with it. The Tribune did an article as well about it, which was amazing. And, uh, yeah, check me out and uh, enjoy the ride because it's coming soon. And it'll definitely be uh, a beautiful thing. Can't wait to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. We'll keep them flowing through the uh, Facebook page, TSB Universe. So you can uh, like there and you'll be updated with the release. Uh, yeah, man. Can subscribe on YouTube because this video will be there. Want to look for subscribers? To, uh, yeah, we'll speak about that later. Uh, it's been a great time. This is a great episode for uh, truly things. John, John, you're your man, man. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Can't wait to see you. Brittany. I mean, you're awesome. We can't wait for you to do this again. Uh, Absolutely. I'm you guys have a good night. Good day. Peace. Be safe. Hey, John, John, what's up, man? This is Sean Patrick Thomas here, and I just want to give you my heartfelt congratulations to you and the cast of Concrete Rose, the first all Latino cast film out of South Bend. That's just a phenomenal accomplishment. So I'm sending you all of my very best to you and the cast at your premiere that's coming out soon. God bless, man. Hey everybody, it's your girl Amanda Perez. I want to give a huge shout out to John John Villanueva for the upcoming film Concrete Rose, the first Latino film in South Bend, Indiana in history, dedicated to Veronica Perez. Congrats to the whole cast. Make sure you guys go see the trailer now. Right now. It's your girl Amanda Perez. You know what it is. Hey, big shout out and best of wishes to John Villanueva and the cast of the up and coming movie Concrete Rose. This is the first Latino film in South Indiana, so congratulations, guys. The trailer's out now, so go and check it out, all right? Mario De Rossi. Hello, everyone. Tony Rice here, former quarterback of the University of Notre Dame 1988 National Championship team. I'd like to congratulate John John and the cast of The Concrete Rose on becoming the first Latino film out of South Bend, Indiana. Wow, what accomplishment. Congratulations to you all, and I wish you all the best. O carro do Dominique está na garagem agora, aquilo será um troféu massa. I want to give a big shout out to John John Villanueva and his beautiful project Concrete Rose. Much success to you, bro. Keep moving forward, man. It's your boy Louis Tristan Silva, Fast and Furious. Make sure you, you keep pushing, man. Keep moving forward. Make sure you check him out. You already know the motion. Holla at your boy. Hello, everybody. Um, boxing champ Victor Ortiz here, sending you a huge congratulations to John, John Villanueva. And the cast of Concrete, uh, Rose, Eli, Damien, Selena, Angel G, and Roy. Many best on the on the up and coming project. Wishing you guys a very, very nothing but the best in the South Bend up. Un abrazo fuerte, and uh, I'm just hanging out with some good friends. You know, Kai. <laughs>
I mean, my little boy, a little Victor. You know, Pastor Sal. Unos saludos. Woo! Big hug to you guys, man. I'll be back in the ring soon with Freddie Roach, so keep an eye out. Hey, everybody, what's up? This is La La with a big shout out to John John. Best wishes on your new up and coming movie, Concrete Rose. Make sure you check out the trailer. Congrats to you. That's a big accomplishment. Really proud of you. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Emilio Rivera, the Padino from the Mayans MC. I just want to congratulate John John Villanueva and the cast, uh, D Lo, Eli, Angel G, and Celine. I wish you much success on the beautiful project, man. Uh, Keep up the great work. I hope to see you on set sometime. Take care. And again, man, uh, congratulations. Very proud of you guys. So, hi everybody. Celise Rose here, sending all of my love and best wishes to John John Villanueva and the beautiful cast of Up and Coming Movie, Concrete Rose. Wait, what? Concrete Rose, are you guys excited? Very happy for all of you. Go check out their trailer now. Such a beautiful story and so inspiring. So if you guys want to watch something that's, you know, inspiring and all that, and just gonna, you know, it's gonna touch your heart, this is the one to go watch. Congratulations to all of you and continue being successful and good job. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye. Hey, what's going on? This is Neo giving a shout out to my man, John John, and everybody that worked on the film Concrete Rose. The sky's the limit with dedication and hard work. Y'all will get to the top. Okay, congratulations on everything that's going on. Much success. It's Neo. Congrats, y'all. Peace and love.